back. We're continuing to celebrate South Africa's diverse heritage through different cultures and traditions. Earlier we learned about, a bit about the Indian culture and right now our focus is on the Vavenda people. They originated from the Great Lakes of Central Africa. They settled in the Sudpansberg Mountains. Here they built their first capital, Zada, the ruins of which can still be seen today. Venda has an interesting mix of other cultures. It appears to have incorporated a variety of East African, Central African, Nguni, and Soto characteristics. Let's get more on this with Venda cultural enthusiast, Rendani Ralinara. Uh, very good morning to you, Rendani, and thank you very much for your time today. So, I mean, I've already just given, I think, a glimpse of the Venda culture, but what is it that a lot of people don't know about the culture itself and the tradition and its practices? Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, there has been um, silence in terms of the promotion of the vendor culture and the tradition. And sometimes, especially in our country, there are people who don't even understand what the vendor people are. They just think maybe it's just a tiny little group in a particular village. And it is not, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's a very consolidated group with a, with a kingdom. Uh, in the northern part of Limbobo. Uh, we have got one kingdom. The king there is um, Pepu Tony Ramaburana. Then uh, he has got 28 chiefs under him and several uh, traditional leaders under him. Now, the, the Venda uh, people have got a language called Chivenda, Kanaru Venda. Now, um, some people uh, for, uh, always forget that uh, uh, this language uh, gives expression to a particular cultural practice. Um, you know, it's a, it's a culture that has got religi religious beliefs. It's a culture that has got uh, dancing practices. It's a culture that has got... Uh, uh, funeral practices that has got uh, celebratory practices and, and uh, that has also has economic practices so both the socio-economic aspects of any nation the, the vendor culture does contain all that now the other most important thing uh, which you actually in your insight mentioned is the consolidation of the Bavenda kingdom uh, in Zata which uh, is still being celebrated even today. Uh, uh, and some people prefer to call it the origin of the vendors because that's where practically the unification of the vendors commenced. And um, the group that was in leadership there is Masingo. And Masingo are still the predominant uh, leaders of the Bavenda people. And um, it's very interesting now that... Uh, uh, if some people don't even remember that they are the president, the current sitting president, uh, is actually a Lisingo. Yeah. He comes from uh, the very same ruling class of the Bavenda people, and um, uh, he, he, he's basically a prince. Um, now, you have got many practices, uh, as people say, and it's a very well consolidated culture. Um, the other aspect that it's always noteworthy with the vendor culture is that it's also adaptive um, and dynamic like any other culture. Yeah. Um, it also incorporates some of the few things. The whole process of acculturation and enculturation does take place within uh, the vendor culture. Um, uh, like, for example, you will find that um, the way certain things were done in the past um, have moved uh, let's just take, for example, circumcision school, because yeah. the vendor people uh, do believe in circumcision school. Um, and initially, the vendors did not have the circumcision school. Uh, they adopted it from the North Sutus, yes. and, um, because of the contacts between the two tribes. Uh, and of course, the vendors now have taken that over, uh, and, and they are practicing it. Of course, now, because of the health issues and so on, People have adapted that yes. uh, to the current challenges. And uh, if you know now with the COVID, for example, uh, most of them were not even allowed to open this year. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's a dynamic culture and uh, it's a beautiful culture. I want to take you back to what you mentioned about the president and the little 
and those who may not know, Libizo Lailing is Ndadamatamela, Ramaphosa. That is, 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 in terms of representation in South Africa, uh, we've always known, we've had Xhosa uh, uh, president, we've had Mzulu as, as our president, now we have a man who comes from the Vavenda culture. What does that mean for in terms of representation, and maybe not even just in terms of the presidency, but in general with a lot of the other achievements from other personalities of people who come from the Vavenda culture? What, is, what does representation mean for Vavenda? Look, I think you, 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 you will remember that um, the vendors, because they, at some point when I checked the stats, the proportion was sitting at one million. Now, uh, which is, in terms of uh, the comparisons with other tribes, they are quite few. And uh, they have, in fact, infused themselves with other tribes in South Africa. Um, because they, they try to break away from their tribal barriers uh, and, and, and infuse themselves with other tribes in South Africa as part of the Rainbow Nation. Uh, but however, um, there are certain achievements that are celebrated by the tribe. For example, you will have uh, successes wherein you have got the president, for example, who comes from there. He's, he, he has always been an international leader. And I don't really think, in my view, vendors celebrate him because he's a, a president of yeah. South Africa and he comes from the Venda tribe. Yeah. They celebrate him on the basis that he's an outstanding leader, he's a remarkable leader uh, internationally even though of course coincidentally he comes from there yeah. and um, he is one person as you know that he, he, he shies away from uh, yes. uh, viewing things from the tribal lines. Yeah. So, uh, and the vendors actually try to shy away from that yeah. because majority of them, to be interesting, um, have intermarried with other tribes. Uh, you know, um, so it's, it's, it's a mix. Yeah. The, and that's why that mixture uh, has brought in uh, some dynamism in, in as far as the vendor culture is concerned. So yeah. that's why if you go through each and every cultural aspect, you'll find that it will contain maybe a Zulu aspect, a Tosa aspect, yeah. a, a white aspect, yeah. and so on and so on, because of the intermarriages and intercontacts uh, and cooperation with other tribes, because right. that has always been there. Yeah. So it, it's very important that people must resist um, to view the vendor <laughs> culture yeah. as this uh, separate, unique, and very traditional um, that is uh, in a particular enclave. I don't mean to, 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 to interrupt you there, uh, yeah. Dr. Alinara. Unfortunately, we don't have any time, but I think uh, South Africans should understand now, you know, just a bit more about the culture. And I mean, it is Heritage Month, and I would like to believe that the diversity of our cultures will definitely be, be you know, tackled and, and looked into a little more than, than they usually are. But Thank you very much uh, for your time this okay. morning. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. Yeah. That is Ndade uh, Randani Ralinalo, of course, is an enthusiast of the Vavenda culture. As you would have heard him just go in depth about everything that's pertaining to the culture. But of course, uh, we're going to be leaving it that f there for now.